and I slam the phone down, and I make a clinical error. I don't take a second and set before she walks through the door. I open the door and say, come on in, and as she comes in on that particular day, because these, this category of patients has radar for what's going on with us. They walk into our building, and they know what we are thinking and where our, our distress level is. It's like they, they got it. And as she walks in the door, she says, and I quote, how old's your wife? Now, my wife is a psychiatrist. We practice in the same suite. Uh, and so that's, it's known that we're husband and wife. And I shot back, none of your business. I wasn't okay. And to show you how okay she was, she said, was that supposed to be helpful? <laughs> now, if you work with this kind of ptsd -er, uh, with some access to involvement. Uh, you know that that's as good as it gets. That's, as good, that's why she's my favorite one. It's, it's because she does stuff like that. And by the, time, by the time she said that, I was set. And I said, oh, it wasn't about you. I'm really sorry. I was just on the phone. Computer people couldn't fix it, angry. And you caught it as you walked in, but it wasn't for you. I'm really sorry. She said, you know, thanks so much for telling me that it wasn't about me because everything about you is about me. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, and, and then she said, so how old's your wife? <laughs> and by that time, I was set. And so I said, why do you ask? <laughs> and she said, I just turned 52. And it's been 19 years. This person keeps records for herself. She goes back into her own records. It's been 19 years since I've been in a relationship with a man. I know that you're divorced and remarried, and what I'm interested in is, did you go after a young one? Because I'm worried that at 52, any man who'd be age appropriate for me wouldn't be interested in women my age. They'd want a young one. So I thought, I'd ask you what you did. And I said, sounds like we're talking about grieving, the possibility of not being in a relationship forever as a result of what happened to you as a child. And she said, you know, that's really right. And we spent an hour doing grief work. Uh, at no point did I tell her how old, how old my wife is, because that's none of her business, or yours for that matter. Uh, but I can tell you that I did not go after a young one. Uh, <laughs> my wife is okay with me saying that. Um, <laughs> and I wrote in my record... Patient stated, colon, quote, how old is your wife, question mark, unquote. I said, and I recorded the entire, none of your business. Was that supposed to be helpful? Just documented the entire interchange. And I do that with every boundary issue that comes up. I document what, what they said, how it came up, how I responded, how it was, got resolved. And the reason I've been doing, I've been doing this since the 1990s. And the reason I, I do this is because I know who reads our records. It isn't colleagues. How many times have you read every record that a colleague has produced for a patient they've referred to you? Hardly ever, right? Most of us read maybe a page or two or a treatment summary, and then we meet the patient and figure it out ourselves. Uh, who reads our records? Lawyers. Lawyers read our records, and experts that lawyers hire if we are in trouble in some way. And I want to make absolutely clear to, to the legal community, if, if I ever fall into their get bad graces as a clinician, uh, the, and to the licensing board community and so on, that I document boundary stuff. And that is an incredibly helpful prophylactic measure to take to keep us safe. Because no lawyer is going to get interested in filing any kind of action against me when they realize that I'm documenting boundary stuff. Uh, because it means that I know what a boundary issue is, I know how to deal with it, and I'm not afraid to document it.